next topic is also very interesting life coaching and weight management and we have uh, two eminent personalities one from each one from the different field and dr amir joshi my colleague from mumbai and he is consultant endocrinologist at bhakti vedanta hospital and research institute endocrine and diabetes clinic mumbai he is a scientific secretary of fesicon 2019 and uh, uh, he is also the joint secretary of the maharashtra endocrine society he has uh, the idf young scholar and european endocrine society travel grant to his credit he has more than 30 in uh, index uh, publications in index journals his research interest is in parathyroid uh, disorders and metabolic bone disease thyroid nodules and obesity and our second uh, speaker or uh, faculty for today is dr hanzabam barun sharma he is assistant professor uh, department of physiology and uh, sports and exercise medicine specialist he is a medical and clinical physiologist at ims bhu varanasi up he is a president of the indian society of sports and exercise medicine he is faculty in charge of sport exercise medicine and sciences and uh, he is trained in sports medicine from netaji subhash national institute of sports patiala he is also a guest faculty and examiner of sports medicine and physiology at impal uh, he is awarded the devraj bajaj research award 2021 by appi he is also interested in is the topper of the biomedical research and he has numerous publications he is a reviewer of uh, and uh, part of editorial team of various journals and his areas of interest are functional lifestyle environmental sports exercise medicine and sciences and interventional clinical physiology i think i have a lot of tongue twisting so i i <laughs> madam you can also say that he is credited but one creditable yeah. thing is yeah. a martial art practitioner <laughs> black belt uh, the wtf taekwondo so and yes. uh my traditionally manipuri martial art that is thang ta the enthusiast so i think we'll learn definitely something new from him today and welcome to both of you all and over to you yeah uh, good evening everyone and at the outset i extend my heartfelt gratitude to esi for giving us this opportunity and thank you dr vaishali madam for the kind introduction i think there is a wonderful similarity between the webinars and our topic so many people join the webinars but hardly listen and so many people want to exercise and diet but hardly comply and uh, that's why we have the pandemic of uh, obesity it's my privilege to uh, welcome dr varun in my little discussion with him also i realized that he has a lot and lot to offer and uh, maybe we'll try to make the best of uh, next 20 or 25 minutes uh, so let me begin with the core area which he is best at the exercise and dr varun please let us know what are the basic different types of exercises and what are the benefits of them in obesity is it really beneficial for an obese person to exercise uh thank you very much uh, thank you esi uh and uh, respected madam and all the senior faculty is here and all the senior person <laughs> and thank you very much uh, dr joshi <clears throat> yeah so uh, basically uh, we have to know certain things uh, before beginning into the detailed talk the first one is the what is the basic purpose of exercise the name exercise you know itself is uh, given with a particular purpose it has a particular aim and that aim is to improve uh, you know what you call the fitness physical fitness and one of the component of the physical fitness uh, you can see is uh, improvement of the body composition mm. so here we basically in sports and exercise science we basically does not restrict ourselves to only weight or only bmi per se so we basically goes into the detail of the body composition like our purpose is mainly reduction of uh, you know uh, 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 the uh, the percentage body fat or the body fat with the increase of the skeletal muscle mass that is lean muscle mass so exercise uh, basically has an important role in maintenance or improvement of this uh, body fat but if you see and uh, if you see all the literature uh, for only and only reduction of the body uh, you know body weight then exercise is not so important has an important role in that particular 
where uh, diet and nutrition has more important role if you want to just reduce the you know body weight but exercise is more important for maintenance of that uh, uh, body uh, weight and it is more important for you know uh, uh, what you call body composition and uh, uh, re regarding the type of the exercise uh, you know exercise uh, simply it can be you know uh, simply it can be divided into many types but uh, for practical purpose it can be aerobic exercise which everyone must be knowing slow jogging and all that stuff where uh, your cardio respiratory system is more focus our focus is more on the cardio respiratory system that is aerobic exercise and another is known as anaerobic exercise where uh, you know they are basically divided uh, based upon uh, you know uh, the physiological source of the energy mm. where in aerobic exercise what we basically focus is the source of the energy that is the atp it should it should come from the aerobic uh, met metabolism mm. so that's why in aerobic exercise where since we are more uh, aerobically you know a fat can also be utilized uh, beside from the carbohydrate that's why fat burning is basically dear in case of the aerobic exercise uh, you know classically is we say but in case of the anaerobic exercise carbohydrate can only be burned in absence of oxygen so that's why uh, you know carbohydrate depending upon that particular energy source anaerobic exercises where we basically focus uh, on anaerobic uh, source of the you know atp that is mostly you know uh, majorly that is uh, glycogen and another form of exercise uh, which we basically see in the gym and all that stuff it is a resistant exercise where we work uh, where the primary focus is on the skeletal muscular system or neuromuscular system where the primary purpose is for the increasing uh, you know muscular fitness it can be you know uh, increase of the you know hypertrophy the muscle hypertrophy you know gaining of the lean uh, muscle mass uh, or just like in in case of the bodybuilding or it it may be uh, you know more focused toward the strength gain that is more uh, 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 production of the force uh, that is muscular force like you know strong men uh, uh, the competition and all this stuff so where uh, our focus is on the neuromuscular system so based on that exercise can be divided into aerobic uh, you know uh, anaerobic or uh, you know strength and uh, resistance exercise so this is in short yeah i think uh, you managed to put uh, a lot of uh, theory into very very small well defined practical easy to understand things i think really really nice see all the guidelines have recommended that there should be a uh, 45 minutes to 1 hour depending on the types of exercises mainly strength uh, focusing on aerobic giving a rational importance to anaerobic and strength training to a variable extent depending on the age group depending on the specific uh, aspect that they are trying to look at one of the important points that dr varun told us was very very relevant exercise in reduction of weight definitely relevant but much much more relevant in improving the body composition there are some who actually don't have a net weight loss with exercise though majority of them do have an improvement in the body composition so that's an important key message that we got from this i always wonder but a small trivia that exercise time is always focused at 1 hour 45 minutes to 1 hour but a screen time is maximized to 2 hours if you look at the screen time recommendations it is said that it's maximum that you should have 2 hours of non professional screen time allowance so uh, adult is can go up, i mean if is oh my god working for 12 hours and then two more hours of screen time do you think that that's rational and do you need to cut down on that because our topic is uh, lifestyle coaching you know <laughs> exercise uh, is one aspect that's right sir that's right. so uh, before going into details uh, we we have to know certain basic basic physiological stuff there are two things which are independent of each other one is physical activity and exercise another is the sedentary type so they they are their effect their adverse effect what you say is they are independent of each other so if you if you increase physical activity and if you if you increase that or if you remains the sedentary activity is not affected then also adverse effect will be there that is known as active couch potato phenomena uh, you know the the person may be very active in the weekend warriors but the, spend maximum of their uh, yeah, his time or her time in the couch so it is a active couch potato phenomena where the abnormality or adverse effect will be still there so sedentary physiology is absolutely independent from exercise physiology 
they are, they are basically different. So the target has to be independent. That's why. So if uh, so, uh, exercise uh, most of the majority of the you know studies. Uh, in the, if you see the majority of the studies of exercise, they majorly focus on uh, you know minimum. That is the word should be minimum recommendation. Whether it may be American College of Sports Medicine or whether it may be from Exercise Physiological Association, like uh, Canadian as, as Exercise Physiological Association, or various other uh, you know uh, the association, what they prescribe is always minimum. That is uh, at least you, you know what they say is at least one fifty minute of moderate to you know vigorous exercise, aerobic exercise per week. That means around if you say uh, five uh, days per week, it will be approximately around thirty minute. Or if you divide into every day, that is it. It should be uh, approximately around twenty two minute or so. But the point is, uh, this is minimum, mm, minimum. And most of the study where all course mortality reduction has been seen is far above that particular minimum. That is, uh, uh, if you go by you know step count, hmm, practically I'm speaking. If you because most of the people they they have this speedometer or you know the uh, the wristwatch stuff where they target uh, the approximately ten thousand step per uh, you know day or something. So if you go about one fifty per minute recommendation, then it will be approximately around say two uh, thousand step uh, per day. It is uh, approximately it will translate into uh, two thousand. Uh, but uh, you know most of the study were uh, performed. Uh, you know they have said that uh, the most important beneficial effect of excess may be far beyond that recommendation. It, it may be around what you call uh, uh, say one thousand fifty. Fifteen thousand, uh, you know, stay uh, per day or so, uh, depending upon the requirement. But uh, but we since uh, you know most of the excuse of exercises, we don't have time and all that stuff. So that's why focus is on the minimum side because what we want is do exercise. That's all. We don't want to if you if you don't have time, then at least do something. That is something is always better than minimum. That's why the focus is always on the minimum. So many, yeah. even if you are not able to do thirty per, uh, you know, thirty minute per day, at least do five minute, ten minute, fifteen, uh, you know, uh, per day, so that you know gradually you have to build up uh, that capacity because you know uh, something is always better. And re regarding the sedentary time, sedentary time, like uh, you have rightly pointed out, is always most of the time, you know, two hours and all that stuff. But the point to be remembered is, if I were to tell you that it is the entire effect is independent of whether you are doing lots of exercise or not. So sedentary time has to be, you know, has to be reduced as far it may be screen time or it may be your your time spending, you know, uh, sleeping or do uh, not sleeping, you know, like you know, uh, staying idly. But sleep is very important. Sleep doesn't uh, come. On that sphere, sleep has independent effect, and this is an independent, separate topic. I or at least for adults is extremely important. For sedentary, the practical point of view, which I want to uh, say to everyone is just, just you know, just break your uh, time, uh, you know, your sedentary time, say around thirty minute to forty five minute. Do some you know five to ten minute of uh, some some kind of the activity which involve your skeletal muscle. Even if you are standing, that's all. Even if you are doing at least standing. So, so that's also is sufficient. So, sedentary time over two hours, I, I, I think uh, you know it should be uh, reduced, more, more reduced, so that uh, we may uh, we may get a balance. But the point is, uh, the all the guidelines are always focusing on the minimum, and we should always reach that particular threshold that is a minimum, and we should go beyond that threshold. And the beyond that, the more. The more benefit is there. With one, uh, with, with one tip, that is, it should be slow. It should be gradual. Hmm. Starting should be very slow, and it should be gradual. Otherwise, injury and the illness will be there. Let me take you to this uh, through this interesting thought that Dr. Varun just shared with us: non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And there is a very, very conscious attempt from the medical fraternity to quantify that non-exercise activity thermogenesis of an person and i realized a very hard way because uh, in this pandemic uh, i most of the children started getting smartphones the parents who were reluctant were now willing and so i decided to look at the smartphones of children who gained weight and then i realized that they used to get up somehow get ready at the school online then after five o'clock, he will do a little bit of chit chatting. So hardly fifteen hundred, two thousand steps that took concentrated in very specific three four hours, some exercise, but that took concentrated within those three four hours. 
and then it made me realize that why not try to look at smartphones of all the children so some accompanied their parents and some like that and then i realized that those who were not gaining weight in the pandemic did not have a different step count some many of them had a step count between 5 to 10000 many children but those who did not gain weight typically were the ones whose activities were spread across the day and the mother will typically say that he you know in his school also gets up moves here and there goes 10 times to the washroom tries to grab something to eat and this is how he is and then i realized and then uh, read also and realized that menopausal women it's not the menopause that causes weight gain but it is a fatigue that reduces their non exercise activity thermogenesis and that's that's exactly the reason of non uh, that uh, of the weight gain that they go through and then i also try to look at my mobile <laughs> and then i realized that okay 6:30 i used to get up i am exercising regularly in the pandemic i am seeing covid patients i need to be fit no so i consciously exercised 6:30 to 7 exercise 7:30 to the opd sitting till noon coming back on some bicycle little bit of chit chat here and there eating food going back then 2 to 7 7:30 8 o'clock again stranded and then i realized you know, maybe that's the reason i did not reduce weight so i'm working hard <laughs> wish me luck on that and i think that's the change in or maybe learning by doing but dr varun uh, let's extend this and there are many who say that doctor you are telling me to exercise i have never done that you want me to be active the recommendation of ada also says that the activity should be in bits and pieces also beyond your session so patients do ask you know is there any special dietary allowance that i need to do what should be my uh, categorization will it change from mild to moderately active person or a heavily active person so that i need to have more allowance for my calories and how should be your dietary composition okay sir so uh, before uh, going into this diet uh, so i just want to extend uh, the discussion on non exercise and uh, you know why uh, many of the complaints is there why exercise is not leading to weight loss what because the people they usually Uh, the most uh, recently one study has just they just published and they just want to see what are the different factors which causes the drop out plan from the gym or a, a particular exercise uh, you know regime the most important uh, was the lack of the time what they they have said and uh, you know lack of you know uh, the no, uh, uh, not achieving the intended target so the most important point which one which i want to say everyone or to the patient to the, to my client when they come is exercise is not for uh, weight loss i mean weight loss fat loss may be there for exercise since a fat and skeletal muscle mass may be there so in fact bmi may increase also in players we see bmi uh, may be more so we may may focus on this uh, one and and if you see uh, uh, you know if, if if you see the what you call the daily energy expenditure going a little bit technical uh, you know if 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 you see the uh, that that you know uh, uh, the uh, dare mar that is resting metabolic rate uh, they approximately around to around say uh, 60 to 75 percent and exercise only thermo thermic effect of exercise or activity is approximately around say 15 to 30 percent that's all so 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 your main focus should be on the rmr and uh, certain exercise like resistance exercise they are known to increase the muscle mass which uh, increase the rmr so long time for long term uh, you know maintenance of that particular weight if you uh, what you have achieved using your nutritional intervention exercise is absolutely important on that and regarding the you know what you call the non uh, you know thermic uh, you non exercise uh, you know other activity that that's are also very very much important because sometimes what people used to do that they used to go to the gym and walk out like anything and you know there you know because uh, there is something known as homeostasis regulation of the feedback negative feedback mechanism or the body the body become fatigue they their uh, their appetite uh, apparently increase they you know just after you know gym and all this thing they 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 eat high uh, calorie intense food and everything will be balanced out so so that thing one has to uh, keep in mind that uh, exercise account for relatively smaller part of the energy expenditure per day and 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 if it is not accompanied by nutritional intervention or dietary intervention sufficient uh, you know uh, significant weight loss uh, will uh, no, not be there and regarding the dietary intervention uh, as uh, you know uh, the lots of the earlier speaker they have already focused on uh, dietary intervention 
So before going into any kind of the program, we basically focus on our requirement, uh, you know, uh, a requirement of that particular kind of person, what they need. For example, you your approach is entirely different from a sedentary person who wants to just do exercise for some fitness to a highly elite players because our focus is different. So dietary intervention are also different as well as, you know, uh, the exercise intervention are also different. That's why just like any kind of the medicine, you know, exercise has to be tailored and individualized. You cannot just say uh, you have to do some more exercise. So this uh, blanket statement will not work because the, uh, the person will not do exercise because they don't uh, how to do, you know, that's practical approach has to be there. So that's why exercise prescription, uh, this term is absolutely important. And it has uh, everyone, every, uh, you know, uh, primary care physician or uh, allied health professional who deals with any kind of the you know health and fitness they should know this uh, exercise prescription step and there are different uh, grading of exercise prescription step like what we follow is basically you know fit bv like you know you have to say to the patient what should be the type of the exercise you know it should be aerobic exercise or anaerobic exercise depending upon uh, their requirement basically if the person is not fit at, at, at all we generally start with the you know mild to moderate aerobic ex exercise and gradually it is built up. Then after having that, uh, you know, baseline fitness, we we little bit go into the, you know, uh, resistance exercise and, and anaerobic exercise. We only focus for uh, when their requirement is there because uh, uh, the uh, uh, the intensity is generally higher in that case. And we generally focus on the, the frequency of the how, uh, you know, how much uh, days per week you have to focus. At least we said uh, at least, you know, two two days per if you you have to avoid at least two days per week. Uh, Per week or, or three days per week then gradually build up to say five to six uh, you know days per week and you have to focus on the intensity for intensity people generally are so mild to moderate and all that stuff nowadays it becomes uh, you know uh, basically uh, easy where because rich watch heart rate monitor is there but uh, for those who doesn't have the heart rate monitor we generally prescribe the talk test uh, you know talk test is a very uh, simple uh, rule of thumb uh, you know technique where sing talk and uh, not able to talk if you are able to sing that means your exercise intensity is mild. If you are able to, you know, talk, you know, complete one sentence, but not able to sing, that means your intensity is going toward the moderate side. And if you are not able to talk at all, if you are breathing uh, heavily, then you are going to the more, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, more uh, toward, uh, the, you know, the higher intensity. So basically in this way, uh, you can uh, prescribe a particular element, particular person. Uh, 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 regarding the intensity of the uh, uh, exercise. And then we basically progress this exercise, adding into the different components so, so that monotonicity should not be there, like that we generally focus. Similarly, diet also absolutely important. So first of all, uh, what you have to see regarding the diet uh, in case of the particular person who, who is coming uh, you uh, for, to you for uh, you know uh, uh, improvement in body composition, we always say that as everyone has important high calorie calorie intense uh, you know diet, we generally tells to uh, tell them to avoid. That is, there are two types: neutral, the nutrient dense. And calorie dense. So the calorie dense, like simple sugar, hmm, simple sugar, the, the absolutely they have to reduce. If you go on simple sugar, then you, you may do whatever exercise you want, then that particular goal will not achieve. So simple sugar is very much important. And while maintaining, uh, you know, uh, you, you cannot just go and say that uh, do a particular hypocaloric diet. You know, the, the, the problem of hypocaloric diet, it, it, it will ultimately fail. Because if you eat less, then what will happen? Your hunger, uh, this thing, craving will increase. Then after some time, that particular diet will fail. That's why all the crash diet and all that uh, diet, which mostly focus on dehydration and mostly focus on this hypocaloric, they ultimately fail. So that's why instead of focusing on the uh, energy dense uh, hypocaloric diet, we generally focus on high nutrient. It may be, you know, a uh, 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 high, uh, you, you know, uh, protein, high amino acid. It, it should be a complex uh, you, toward going to the, the toward a complex carb uh, and that carb should be within a particular limit. And, you know, healthy fat can also be there. Vegetables and all that stuff uh, has to be uh, added depending upon their requirement. So everything is different. It has to be tailor made. And diet and exercise has to go hand in hand, and we must not focus on hypocaloric diet. That is my <laughs> message. Yeah, that's a, that's a very very wonderful comprehensive advice, Doctor Barun. I think let me also put a word on the safety aspects of exercise. At times, uh, people just uh, exceed what they have never done, 
at times attempt what they should not be doing simple things like monitoring glucose level monitoring blood pressure measuring the exercises particularly what we call it as uh, cardio pulmonary rehab for people with limited pulmonary as well as cardiac capacities rationalization and gradually building up the exercise capacity for those who have joint limitations or joint mobility limitations putting safety gears and a safe ecosystem a simple thing like availability of a glucometer in a gym or a blood pressure monitor in a gym or at times at least the sports events now have a uh, life saving equipment just now i came to know that uh, uh, spin legend shane won passed away somebody who used to exercise somebody who must have been very very conscious about his lifestyle we all know that eventuality can strike any time and let us also create a safe ecosystem for people who exercise remember what you are be mindful of what you need to and be happy for what you are doing exercise is a glorification of the state of health that you are in just before we conclude maybe a uh, last point that we discuss but i have a simple question for you to our uh, answer you are in a state which is going for a poll somebody is promising cash somebody is promising electricity somebody is promising job somebody is promising laptop if you promise that you will help everybody lose 5 kg weight what are your odds of winning i want an honest answer yeah uh, see the uh, honest answer is very uh, difficult here it, be, it depends upon the persons also you know whether they are uh, know. you know sticking to the plan or not but scientifically from my experience i can say that the maximum you know weight loss uh, which we achieve is maybe around 0.5 to 1 you know kg per per week or so depending upon it's not too uh, too much we cannot just promise everything because whatever uh, if unethically or unscientific method which everyone can do and people are doing but the problem is they are basically depending upon a dehydration that is you know you know because uh, you know if you dehydrate yourself then weight reduction will be there 70 to 60% of your body weight is water just water so 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 dehydration technique the, some of the athlete they used to do all this dehydration technique you know going to long sauna and all this stuff before the weighing category uh, weighing in even for a weight category sports but the problem is as you have uh, uh, the, everyone has focus is you you cannot just uh, do do like that it, it has to be scientifically it has to be the weight uh, re- reduction has to be scientifically sound it has to be evidence based and exercise as well as you know uh, what you call uh, the diet has to go in hand to hand and and right you you, you have already pointed out that uh, that means uh, uh, you know there are certain uh, issues certain danger with exercise also especially after post covid what we many of the this thing and news we are uh, seeing all this thing so exercise for any kind of the problem for a normal person also uh, there are certain uh, you know you have to follow a certain minimum guideline and the most rule of thumb is always start with a minimum and build up gradually hmm. gradually it may be say 10% rule you can follow increase in 10% intensity after it is 10 days or so so depending upon different rules of thumbs are there depending upon the particular person but point to be noted is exercise uh, 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 for mild or for example for say diabetic type 2 diabetic person if they are coming for exercise what we uh, uh, focusing on diabetes what we generally uh, say is uh, you know whether it may be type 1 or type 2 uh, some of the players are there which which come to us so basically uh, before any kind of the competition our focus is on the sba one see less than it should be less than 7 or in case of the adolescent 7.5 may be there uh, and uh, the ideal uh, you know uh, what you call blood glucose uh, which we generally see is around 120 to 180 Um, milligram per day, deciliter. If any kind of the blood sugar is more than say 250, uh, you know, or 300, then we generally postpone that particular exercise. And and that's why uh, blood sugar monitoring is absolutely important. Another point which one has to understand is type of the exercise. And in, in case of diabetes, for example, say, you know, most of the uh, anaerobic exercise or resistant exercise, they are mostly associated with the counter regulatory hormones, which may increase the the chances of hyperglycemia. so in that point also uh, you you have to take into 
consideration and for example most of the exercise which are aerobic like you know cycling it may be swimming it may be low, generally they are uh, the hypoglycemia may be there and hypoglycemia can be immediate you know it may be up to four hour or it may be delayed also you know you may have uh, hypoglycemic sy syndrome uh, especially nocturnal uh, hypoglycemia uh, the episode is there so depending upon that your uh, if uh, type 1 diabetic is taking insulin then reduction of the insulin baseline insulin uh, re reduction can be there up to you say 50 percent hmm, depending upon that particular requirement and in case of the type 2 diabetic you may skip the you know uh, what you call hypoglycemic drug like sulfonylurea and all, all that stuff so so management uh, side by side management of the drug th therapy is absolutely important and and for uh, for say a hypertensive individual also you you have to you know the control of the hypertension is uh, ex extremely important for example a normal person coming to you with a history of say the uh, baseline uh, you know blood sugar uh, should, should be if it is more than say 200 per uh, 200 by 120 then absolutely no exercise exercise should be avoided and in case of during the exercise testing if there is a you know monitoring for blood uh, sugar as well as blood uh, glucose is uh, uh, bp is there then it will be extremely useful like some of the times what we see during the exercise stress test what we use which we do is if the you know systolic blood pressure should not uh, fall by say uh, a, a, a equal to a more than 10 millimeter mercury or diastolic should not go above say uh, more than 15 uh, millimeter mercury as compared to the baseline hmm. or a, a, there should not be any high say 250 more than 250 or more than uh, 250 of systolic blood pressure or 115 of uh, 115 uh, diastolic blood should not go so like that all these are a basic physiological stuff which we uh, uh, see during that particular and that particular person has to uh, uh, know also like many of the time every fitness enthusiast they are uh, they are, they are using this heart rate monitor so, uh, so if you if you know how to calculate your maximum heart rate, it's uh, simple to twenty minus A, uh, or uh, you can calculate a more reliable you know method by using two zero eight minus point seven into A's in year, or whatever your A's is, you can fit in this equation and you can find out your maximum heart rate. That is the maximum heart rate which your uh, system, your body is achievable. So we generally confine to less than say eighty five percent of or eighty percent of that maximum heart rate. We don't go beyond that. Uh, so in regular exercise for aerobic exercise, most of the time, what we focus is around 50 to 85 percent of that range. Yeah. We, the, in case of the high elite player, and if the, your requirement is something, then we focus only on that under a supervision. So there are so yeah. many different monitoring steps there, and depending upon you know each individual, each particular individual who's are having is a particular you know a cardiometabolic uh, illness or any kind of the you know skeletal muscular like uh, osteoarthritis. Like we in osteoarthritis, our focus is mostly on strength training and muscle again, where quadricep improvement is extremely important. Quadricep and hip muscle. Hmm. And uh, so, so depending upon that particular part, like for example, if your client is more than uh, yes, uh, 65 years old, so our focus is more on a proprioceptive and balance exercise. If fall, fall prevention is extremely important. One fall, hip fracture or uh, neck of the femur, then gone, problem. <laughs> so depending yeah, upon think, that particular uh, requirement. Uh, I agree generally... with you, uh, Dr. Varun. Uh, Dr. Varun uh, didn't answer my question directly, but what he made us realize is that... Uh, one thing weight loss is difficult exercising <laughs> is requires a lot of you cannot just promise to anyone more, more importantly it also tells us one of the sad things that is the government spending had increased only because of the pandemic on chronic diseases it's negligible a family budget prioritizes food prioritizes prioritizes trips prioritizes pleasure but doesn't prioritize exercise we all Absolutely. have to change the state of mind from simply living, hardly thinking to simple living, high thinking, healthy living. It was really wonderful to have you, Dr. Varun. It's important to be on time and let's not exceed one hour mark post time. It's over to you, Dr. Vaishali, madam. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. I think we heard uh, two experts speaking with their pulse of wisdom being shared with all of us. I think I'm feeling guilty now that I have to halt you all because of lack of time. Definitely we would like to hear you more. But I think Dr. Varun has very well covered the importance of personalization, tailor making of exercise and the need for harboring that exercise is a must. Of course, uh, pre-exercise assessment and safety issues have been well highlighted by Dr. Amir.
and uh, dr amir has also highlighted the importance of neat and uh, how important it is to have a non exercise related activity in obese patients i don't see any questions but i have a couple of questions for both of you dr amir what about uh, sarcopenia in obesity we see a lot of patients who have lot of muscle weakness and they are not lazy by uh, choice they are lazy by the muscles so what do you do in such situations yes i think that is a very very important and relevant point and it actually becomes a vicious cycle that obesity and weak muscles promote sedentariness the mesenchymal cell which has the ability to differentiate anywhere unfortunately shunts from the muscle to the fat and that results in typically what we call as metabolically unhealthy obesity which keeps on begetting the cycle and there where is the importance of exercise mere caloric restriction is not never going to be enough to build the muscles and there comes the importance of exercise where it may not actually show a scale reducing weight but it may change how the person looks internally both physically as well as mentally so definitely exercise may help the uh, muscle building also and muscle strengthening aspects of uh, exercise may improve this aspect also so dr barun i have a question for you i understood your gymming and the need for exercise but how do you mind gym then then so how do you uh, motivate your patients to exercise because laziness would get beget laziness and exercise would beget exercise how do you make that uh, person motivate to exercise a lazy obese or osteoarthritic person to exercise is a difficult task making a person like you train yourself is a easy task so how do you mind gym then yeah yeah absolutely that's uh, you know uh, there is a neurophysiological reason behind why people doesn't want to do exercise you know <laughs> you cannot just break you you cannot just say do exercise and per person will stop uh, start doing exercise so the most important point is you have to start gradually and it has to be you know it has to be with some some person community or group based absolutely uh, you know you you have to motivate motivate uh, your his or her friend you know client friend or it should be a group a group session can be done and you have to maintain yourself also because you have to present in some in front of your client so your client will directly see you so you have to uh, you, and and another uh, what you call uh, what we uh, generally practice is 5a 5a which is, that is first we basically assess uh, uh, you know what are the requirement uh, of that particular uh, this thing assess the assessment ha has to be done then after doing all the assessment then we generally see the ability of that particular person is able to do that particular thing or not then we uh, we, we we basically uh, you know talk about all, all the usefulness of the exercise and all this and we give in written writing uh, you know prescription exercise prescription is uh, absolutely important you cannot just talk and say it has to be written in the form of writing and it has to be you know uh, like many other speaker has already focus on the you know smart part that is a uh, specific and you know measurable attainable or, uh, all that stuff time bound it has to be time bound then after that the, then then you have to give uh, you know what you call uh, uh, that particular per person assess uh, you know the you have to maintain uh, your relationship with some local gym or some uh, somewhere because you have to in integrate that particular person and another point is you have to show that person that there are some objective uh, you know objective uh, measurable attainable you know this fitness parameters you are getting like it may be you know uh, yeah, like doing your body composition it may be aerobic fitness you you just do uh, uh, the vo2 max testing or some other simple testing and you can show to that particular person that see these are uh, these are having or uh, your uh, do sir, certain you know blood uh, profile or metabolic uh, profile like sometimes you know many of the times obese uh, person they may come and we already know that there are different type of obesity where metabolically healthy obese is also there uh, and there are some people who are, who are toffee that is uh, you know thin outside but fat inside where visceral uh, adipose tissue is there so uh, like for example indian phenotype uh, so in that way you can just see all the like you know many metabolic profile also so what you have to do is you have to do counseling absolutely important and follow up is absolutely important like it maybe you may do uh, like yeah, we were 3 months or 6 month or or like that so in only in that way 
you may motivate a particular person otherwise that person is not going to do any kind of exercise okay one exercise last quick difficult. question for uh, you the, normally our patients ask that should we take protein before going to the gym or after coming from the gym what is your answer to this <laughs> Okay, it depends upon a particular person. It depends upon the type of the protein also. Some protein like casein protein is there. They are slowly absor absorbable. We generally prescribe them after, uh, you know, uh, at uh, before bedtime or where it be because slow absorption is there. And some protein are there where absorp uh, absorption is high, like whey protein. They may be prescribed after post exercise because uh, just doing uh, after exercise, you your uh, you you know your muscle ability to pick up that amino acid is very fast. Uh, that's why we generally combine. for it's also important for below of the glycogen for say 30 minute uh, to one hour two hour we generally prescribe uh, the amino acid or uh, you know that highly absorbable whey protein so depending upon their requirement but the overall requirement may be depending upon 0.8 gram per kg per day up to one you can go one and sometimes in player in player we can go up to 2.7 gram per kg uh, you know per day also so protein requirement is there but depend upon what you want i think you have answered most of the rapid fire questions and you've done both of you all have done a wonderful job in a small period of time and thanks to both of you all and over to you dr nitin and dr mohan for the proceedings thank you so much and indeed it was a very very uh, nice and enlightening session there are a lot of positive comments uh, i mean there are about 870 people logged in here but i just saw the youtube link and there are a lot of people listening live there and a lot of compliments for your session i think it was really well taken thank you so much dr amaya and dr barun for your time thank you dr vaishali for that excellent moderation and i think with this we come to an end of today's uh, session and we would have uh, another exciting session tomorrow starting again at 5 pm for the second day of the obesity week by the endocrine society of india till then stay safe good night and see you all tomorrow thank you bye bye Thank you all and bye bye good night bye bye